Alright, so we followed the cable, we started the cable in my office, and we followed it all the way into the networking closet, right? And at some point, these copper, those copper twisted pair cables that we looked at, the signal that we run through them just sort of runs out of steam, right? So at some point, you send in a signal at one end, that signal gets weaker and weaker as it goes, and so at some point, we run out of, we run out of cable. So for the copper cables that we started with, that's about 100 meters, right? And so I have Ryan Standish here, who's one of the network engineers at UBIT, and he's going to show us what happens next, right? So this is super awesome. Uh, we have some fiber optic cable here, so, so tell me about this cable. Okay. Um, so you may have seen the patch cords uh, that are made out of copper. A lot mm -hmm. of people are used to those. Yeah. Uh, now this is a, a patch cord as well, but this is with fiber optic cable. So there's actual, the uh, copper cable had eight um, individual. Eight Pair, four pair, pair. four eight pairs, wires. Yeah, yeah, eight wires. Uh, this only has two, and uh, typically it's for a transmit receive scenario. So they're going uh, different, directions. In different directions. Exactly. Okay, so for duplex communication, um, what I did here, this is this particular one is a uh, single mode fiber, and uh, the glass on the inside is a uh, ten micron mm -hmm. diameter. Here, keep talking. I'm just going to hold. All right. This up. So uh, one of, one of the tools that we use to help locate. Uh, fiber across campus is called a visual fault locator and this is just a, it's a laser source so we don't want to look at it. Yeah, um, don't, don't. Uh, now if this was plugged into a piece of active equipment the laser that it uses is outside of the visual spectrum. Okay. So y you're walking in you go like this uh -huh. you're not going to see it but it's causing damage to your eyes. So okay. that's gotcha. just an important safety thing there. Um, so here I'm going to plug this in. looks like a flashlight but I have a little uh, port on here specifically to put in the connector. So this has both a visual and a non-visual frequency that you can use. Uh, well, this one is it's just visual because okay. this is meant for us to see it. Gotcha. But still, it's it's in uh, the spectrum of light that could hurt your eyes. So when I turn it on, uh, you can see the I actually took off the coatings and the uh, jacket right. down to the individual strand, uh, and you can see the light coming out of there. Um, so this is called the visual fault locator. We use it uh, for another purpose as well. Uh, you might have this is an example. Uh, if you could see this on the camera, but you can actually see the light coming through the uh, the jacket of the fiber. So if someone were, were to kink it, um, it's kind of hard to do here, but oh, you, can see, it, you yeah. can see that there's an actual problem. Right. So you don't want the cable to kink like that because there's light escape. Exactly. Right? So yeah. you're losing some of the signal that you're trying to send through the cable. It's coming out the side. There's also a security implication, right? Yeah. Um, one of the things we were talking about is since you see the light escaping from the side, uh, and secure networks, um, uh, they're concerned with somebody going into a cable that might be underground, and actually kinking the cable like this, and putting a device and uh, capturing any data going across there. Yeah. So it is much more secure. Uh, there's no uh, EMI or EMF uh, energy coming off the cable, but like I said, if you have phys physical access to it, there are devices out there that can grab data. Right. Um, so this, so once we get to the networking cabin on this floor, the rest of the wiring is fiber optic all the way out, out of campus. All the way to probably the all next the person on the other side of the world where it converts back to copper. Yeah, cool. And uh, th this one will go, uh, depends on the, the laser source through here, but this is what you'll see, the single mode fiber uh -huh. uh, that goes uh, across the country. And how, how long would this run before it would need it to be sort of stepped up or reamped? Oh, okay. it, it all depends on the... The, how the source. That is? Yeah, uh, uh, different sources are easily 10 kilometers. Uh, wow. Like I said, you know, you put a, a heavier source on here. Uh, it's usually the the transatlantic stuff, yeah. um, or cross country stuff that has an amp on it. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, cool. Thank you very much. You're welcome.